Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I am going to be answering question number five from the June 2021 exam for the International A, A level, International A level for Excel, the Statistics S1 paper. And this question here is about discrete random variables. So it told us that the discrete random variable X has the following probability distribution. So the probability that x will be equal to negative 2 is a, the probability that x will be neg equal to negative 1 is b, and so on. 0 is c, probability it's 1 is b, and the probability of that it's going to be 4 is equal to a. We know that the expected value of x or the mean value of x is 0 0.5, find the value of a. So to find the expected value, the expected value of x, we basically multiply the event by its probability and we add them all together and that gives us the expected value. So it's minus 2 times a plus minus 1 times minus 1 times b plus 0 times c plus 1 times b plus 4 times a and the expected value of x is 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 is equal to negative 2a and you're going to have minus b and this will be 0 and you'll have a plus b and you'll have a plus 4a the minus b and the plus b will cancel out so you're left with 0 0.5 is equal to 2a so therefore a is equal to 0 0.25 divide both sides by 2 so a is equal to 0 0.25 okay now for part b it says, given also that the variance of x is 5.01, find the value of b and c. So we know that this is 0 0.25 now. And this is 0 0.25. We found that from part A. Now we know the variance of x is equal to the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. All right. So we know the expected value of x is equal to, was it? Um, 0 0.5 okay which is the same as the mean so this is going to be 0 0.5 the square of the mean 0 0.5 squared the mean of the squares is where you take the x value and you square them so I'll do that here that's going to be um, 4 up here 4 1 0 1 and this will be 16 and then you multiply this by the its probability distributions so um, the mean of the square, so we can say the variance of x is 5.01 is equal to the mean of the square, so it's going to be 4 times 0 0.25 plus um, 1 times b, okay, we don't know what b is yet, plus 0 times c, okay, which is 0, okay, plus 1 times b again, plus 16 times 0 0.25, Okay, minus the square of the mean, which is going to be 0 0.5 squared. Okay, so this is the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean, and that's equal to the variance of x, which is 5.01 given in the question. So you can see here the only unknown is b, so we can find what b is using this little equation we've set up. So 5.01 is equal to, that's 1 plus, that's 2b, and 16 times a quarter is 4, so that's plus 4 minus and a half squared is a quarter so it's 0 0.25 so 5.01 is equal to that's going to be 2b plus 5 minus 0 0.25 so it's 2b so it's going to be plus 4.75 right 2b plus 4.75 because it's 2b plus 5 minus yes that's right so then we can say that uh, 5.01 minus 4.75 is equal to 2b so this is going to be like 0 0.25 plus 0 0.01. So 0 0.26 is equal to 2b. Therefore, b is equal to a half of 0 0.6, 0 0.26, which is 0 0.13. So that's the value of b. And to find c, what we know is the, the expected value, uh, sorry, the, the probability distribution, the sum of all these probabilities is always going to be 1. The sum of all the probabilities is going to be 1. And we know now that B is equal to 0 0.13. So that's 0 0.13. And this is 0 0.13. Okay, so let me just do that. Um, so it comes out a bit neater. Just give me a second. 
Okay, so we know now that the A's are 0 0.25, so this is 0 0.25 and 0 0.25. And we know the B's are 0 0.13, so the B's are those two places, so that's 0 0.13 and 0 0.13. So I know the sum of all of these is equal to 1. So I've got, you know, basically to find what C is, I can say 0 0.25 plus 0 0.13 plus C plus, again, 0 0.13 plus 0 0.25 is equal to 1. So this is like uh, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.26, that's 0 0.76 plus C is equal to 1, so C is 1 minus 0 0.76, so C is 0 0.24, so that's the value of C, 0 0.24, so I can place that here now, okay, so I'll place that here, so C is 0 0.24, okay, so I've got my values in my table, and um, I'm going to use that, I think, in the next part of the question. So let's go to part B now. Okay, so part B says the random variable y is equal to 5 minus 8x. So part 1, find the expected value of y. So I can just replace the y with what y is equal to, which is 5 minus 8x. Okay, so the expected value is like the mean. And the mean, when there's some transformation of the mean, some sort of like a linear transformation of the mean where the mean is multiplied by something and add something added to it, then basically, um, you know, that is both a multiplication of all the data values and the adding or subtracting affects the mean. The mean is affected by both multiplication and addition and subtraction, okay? Um, it's affected by both of them. And so if you take a set of values and you multiply each, set, each, part, each value by something, the mean of those set of values will change. And if you take a set of values and you add or subtract something to those set of values, then the mean of those set of values will also change. So what we can do here, you can say that this is equal to, um, you do negative eight times the expected value of x plus five, because this is like plus five, so minus eight x plus five. So minus eight times expected value of x, so it's minus eight times, the expected value of x is 0 0.5 plus 5, which gives you minus 4 plus 5, which is equal to 1. So we can say the expected value of y is equal to 1. And part 2 says the variance of y. So the variance is like um, related to the standard deviation, which is the spread of the data. And uh, the spread of the data is only affected by multiplication and division of each of the data values. If you were to take each data value and multiply or divide it by a certain number, then you know the, um, the spread of the data will change. But if you were to take each data value and add the same amount to each data value, the, the spread of the data will still be the same. It won't change how spread apart they are. So the variance is only affected by multiplication or division. And the variance is like the square of the standard deviation. So what you do is you take your minus 8 and you square it. You take the thing that's multiplying and you square it. So this is transformed by adding 5 and, and multiplying by minus 8. So you only take the minus 8 part and you square it because variance is the square of standard deviation. And you multiply that by the variance of x. So what I'll do is I'll just write this uh, variance of y is equal to the variance of 5 minus 8x which is equal to minus 8 squared times the variance of x. <clears throat> and that gives us 64 multiplied by the variance of x they told us. We found in, in, that that's from part A. It was given as 5.01. So 64 times 5.01. And that will give you your answer. 64 times 5.01 which gives you 320.64. .6, okay, so that's the variance of y. So there's the answer for part two of question five, part C. Okay, now for part D. Okay, so it says find the probability 
that 4x squared is greater than y. Now we know that from this part of the question that y is 5 minus 8x. So y is equal to 5 minus 8x. So basically what we got to do is find the probability that 4x squared is greater than 5 minus 8x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part in here, 4x squared is greater than 5 minus 8x, and I'm going to solve this inequality and then find the probability of that. So let me solve this inequality by bringing everything onto one side. It's like a quadratic. 4x squared plus 8x minus 5 is greater than 0. So first I'm going to find the critical values to find out where this is equal to 0. This is something actually from P1, which is, of course, something which can come up in S1. Um, so this is a quadratic equation. I'm going to solve it to find where this is equal to 0 first. So I'm going to use my little window method that I like, which you might have seen in some of my P1, P2 videos. You've got 4x squared and minus 5. So I need to find two numbers that multiply to, to give me the same as these two, which is minus 20x squared. And they add to give me the same as this, which is plus 8x. Um, so the ways of getting 20, you got 20 and 1, 10 and 10 and 2. That's the right one. They have to have different signs. So you can have plus 10x and minus 2x. They multiply to give me the same product as these two. And when I add them together, I get this middle term 8x. Okay, so now I'm going to take out the common factor from these two terms, which is 2x. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times minus 1 is 2x. And 2x times plus 5 is 5x. Okay, so there we have, we've factorized it. So we got 2x minus 1 times 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. So we can say x is equal to minus a half and x is equal to, sorry, x is equal to positive a half, sorry. Add 1 and divide by 2 and x is equal to negative 5 over 2. So we can say x is equal to 0 0.5 and x is equal to minus 2.5. Okay, those are the critical values. Now I've got to solve this inequality to find when it's greater than zero. We know when this, this thing is equal to zero, we want to find when it's greater than zero. So it hits zero at a half and at minus 2.5. It's gonna be a parabola that opens upwards, goes through minus, it goes through minus, two point, minus five here. So we can see that, that this, um, the solution to this um, equation here, to this inequality here is when x is less than negative 2.5 and when x is greater than 0 0.5 so you see the table stops at minus 2 so there's no no probability it's, you know there's minus there's nothing below minus 2 so we can't really deal with this section here x is less than minus 2.5 there's no probabilities for that but there is probabilities for this so we've got to find the probability basically that x is greater than 0 0.5 so the probability that x is greater than 0 0.5, well, it's going to be this and this. The probability that x is equal to 4 plus the probability that x is equal to 1. So it's the probability that x is equal to 1 plus the probability that x is equal to 4, which is equal to, it's 0 0.13 plus 0 0.25. So 0 0.13 plus 0 0.25, which is um, 0 0.38. Okay, so there's the answer to the question, part D. Okay, so there we have it, question 5 completed um, from this June 2021 S1 statistics paper. Um, other questions from this particular paper can be found by clicking on this link here. Other questions from this topic of discrete random variables can be found by clicking on this link. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link that should appear in this area here. And other questions from other units of this uh, international A-level exam for A-levels P1, P2, P3, P4 and M1 can be found by clicking on the um, links in the description under the video as well as IGCSE papers. You'll find a, a link to that as well. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.